Okay guys, we are about to start the first book for today's video. Now, what book is that going to be? Now, we have these three book selections for the new releases. And you guys know usually the way that I go about reading vlogs when I have multiple different books is that I usually pick the thickest one first and use my most anticipated for the last one. But in this case, we are reading my most anticipated first and probably, well, actually I'm very excited to read all of these. We're starting with the thickest one and most anticipated first. So that is obviously things we left behind. I have been saving this to read on vacation. Just that way I can put my full attention to it. This is the book that everybody has been waiting on. If you've read the Knock Mat series since the first book, everybody has been waiting for this book since that one. This one is about Lucien and Sloane, and I am so excited. It's like nearly 600 pages, but you know what? I love Lucy's score, so I'm very excited to read this book. I have it downloaded on my Kindle, so I'm going to pack up my tote bag, and we're going to go to the beach and start reading. <laughs> my voice and my nose already being ready my mouth being on fire and me thinking that this is an appropriate time to talk to you guys about my first very cohesive thoughts about the book so i am reading it on my kindle right now things we left behind in case you didn't know where we're at in the video i am 20 percent into the book right now and i have to say that it feels like i'm reading about nash and lena continued getting a little bit more of Nox and Naomi and then also getting some of Steph and jo the two guys the two other guys it feels like I am learning more about them than I even am about Lucian and Sloane it's not that I'm not liking the book it's just that I wish that we're just overall focusing on them and I can tell like the subplot of the storyline that's going on but it's like instead of focusing on Lucian and Sloane we're focusing on literally anything else and like, it's not bad writing. I am enjoying reading it, but I'm also having this underlying sense of annoyance because I picked this book up to read about Lucian and Sloane and learn about their backstory and see them together. And I'm not saying they have to be happy-go-lucky 20% through the book, but I'm saying, like, I would enjoy more of a, like, them interacting, them progressing their friendship relationship whatever it may be at this point in the story like i've waited since the first book and now that this is here we're like waiting throughout the whole entire book to even like learn about them it's like both of them like lucian will hang out with like Knox and nash and then like sloan will be hanging out with naomi and lena and all they're talking about is Knox and nash or like naomi and lena or like their relationships that we've already had a 500 plus book for like i'm fine with an epilogue of us talking about everybody but really at this point you know like and i live for the cute moments but i just wish at this point i could start learning more about them anyway that's my grudge with this book right now but like i said it doesn't mean that i think the book's bad i still really enjoy it and obviously i love all of these characters i just wish that in the book that i was reading about lucian and sloan it was about lucian and sloan hey okay, guys things we left behind let's talk about it i am now on day two of reading this book which honestly is very surprising for me because i thought i was going to read this and like binge it in one day because i have been waiting so long i've been waiting since things we never got over came out i have been waiting for this book so i expected like from the jump we're getting like the past and present point of views we're learning about their history together we're building upon their relationship and i am 30 percent through this book right now and it has felt like everybody else's book and that doesn't mean that i'm not enjoying it because i do love these characters and i love the story of this book and in the fictional world that we're living in but with this, I feel like I have already waited so long for Lucien Sloan's book. So inside of Lucien Sloan's book, why am I waiting to learn and see Lucien and Sloan? Like, I'm not saying I want to learn everything off the bat. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying, like, we're still talking about Nash and Lena so much. I already spent my time with those characters. I want to focus on them. Then we're talking about sub-characters. We're talking about Naomi and Knox. We're talking about things going on with them. And then there's, like, whole entire subplots that we're focusing on instead of the romance. It's like, can we build upon them and worry about the other stuff later? And with this book, I guess going in, I thought I was going to be getting, like, Lucien caring so deeply for Sloane and his point of view. And he's very protective of her. And in his point of view, when you're in his head, is he always paying attention to Sloane? Yes, but it feels like an annoyance 
and it all just feels purely physical with them and nothing feels like emotional at all. I don't feel like an actual connection between the two of them, which is severely, severely disappointing. That being said, I like the writing. I like the story. Like I am enjoying it when I'm reading it, but in the back of my head, I am always waiting for more of Lucian and Sloane. So I'm hoping that it gets better. I mean, I'm only 30% through the book, so I'm about to go to the pool in the beach and try to finish this today because I really, really want to see, like I'm very intrigued to see what this, what happens in this book. honest I didn't account for how loud it would be out here now I'm gonna have to watch this clip back on top of my voice being very unbearable to listen to but to give you guys an update on things we left behind I'm now about 50% through the book and I feel like we are just now starting to make little tiny paths to Lucian and Sloan and crack through the exterior and I have nothing wrong like I don't dislike a slow burn but this book has felt like I mean I've already went to the whole entire like this book doesn't feel like Lucy and its own book and we're finally starting to feel like this but I feel like this subplot in this book like Lucy score always does like a funny little mystery subplot that's like kind of very random but with this one it's like taking the forefront of the book is my camera lens foggy I just wish it would take a back seat but I also understand why because I think it has partly to do why Lucian won't really like fully open up to Sloan, but still it's a little annoying at this point It's weird because I feel like I come on here and I say these things But I still am enjoying the book and I'm enjoying the writing. I'm enjoying the story It's just that there are things that I wish was happening that aren't happening because there was like a, a, a sliver of a moment that Lucian was giving what I wanted him to give and he was being very like sweet and loving and their relationship felt a little tiny bit more than just purely physical and then it all went awry. I always say this with like grumpy or closed off guys. There's a difference between being like grumpy and closed off than being just a straight up jerk and I understand, I understand because listen I love Lucian that everybody's gonna be like it's because he has his baggage and he's trying to purposely push people away. Saying the most heinous and mean spirited things to somebody just because you don't want them to be in danger doesn't make them mean words and just absolutely out of line and that's exactly what Lucian's doing in this book. Oh yeah girl you tell him how it is. You tell him how it is. I love when an author has the main girl just not get walked all over. The fact that Sloane is basically like, get out of my life, leave me the hell alone, and act like I never existed. Cause that's where I'm at with Lucene right now. He's really pissing me off. And I'm honestly like so mad and so upset because I love Knox and Naomi, but I was so excited for Lucene and Sloane and this is not what not I thought it was going to be. Gonna be. Especially when you hint at a history between two people all throughout the books and then make the relationship purely physical. Like, ugh. why is there literally a fight scene in like all of these books? Hey, hey what's, going what's going on? on? You know, like why is there a fight scene in literally all of these? But this is so funny. I love Nash and Knox because they're sticking up for Sloan. Oh, I love it. <laughs> This 
quote, love makes men stupid. Yes, it does. But does denying it make us any stupider? Oh, wait. I kind of don't get it. I don't know why I thought that ate. Let me tell you, Lucian would have to do some serious, serious groveling because oh, spent this whole entire book denying any type of feeling and it's getting on my last nerve. I'm so disappointed. I'm literally on day three of reading this book and I say that because that's not usual behavior for me. So I am 90% through this book. I'm going to hurry up and read the last little snippets and then share my final thoughts so we can finally move on to the other two books in today's video. Guys, I did it. I did it. I finally finished Things We Left Behind. And I'm not saying this in the way that's like, this was so terrible, I can't believe I finished it. It's more of this book took me three days to read and I don't understand why. Let's talk about it. One of my most anticipated books of the year that let me down very much. I want to start out by saying I gave this book a three stars and I enjoyed the book. Please do not think that me giving this book a three stars correlates to it being a bad book. Somehow this book managed to be my least favorite in the Knock em Out series by pure confusion on my part. So let's talk about it. First of all, Lucian and Sloan were I feel like the most anticipated book couple since Things We Never Got Over came out. Like when I read that book, I love Things We Never Got Over. Like I love that book. And I can remember the specific feeling, and I'm pretty sure I might have even said it in a video, that I was like, I cannot wait for Lucy and Sloan's book. Like I can't wait for it because of the crumbs that we got of them in other books. So it makes no sense how when we see crumbs of them having so much chemistry in other books that they have none in this one. But I'm saying that, especially in this book, their relationship felt purely physical, which didn't make any sense seeming as if they have a history together. Like they have this deep emotional history that also we didn't see a lot of. I thought when we were gonna see more of them in the past, we were gonna be like seeing these moments of them and how they have this deep connected history. But all it did was really like highlight on the points of like trouble that was within Lucian's childhood which I understand was a big plot point but also I feel like I would have enjoyed instead of some of the like pages upon pages that we got of the subplot of the subplots in this book I wish we would have got more pages of them in the past tense having this close friendship and relationship instead we were told about it instead of shown it in the book that was one of the things that I found disappointing because I was really looking forward to seeing some of the past perspective of them being close and you got like a snippet of that but like I said it was more of like what was happening to Lucian and like I said that is also important but I also feel like we got too much of everybody else in this book we were never really focused on Lucian and Sloan we were always either talking about Steph and Jeremiah or we were talking still talking about Nash and Lena even though they got their whole entire other book we were still looking at Knox's character development even though we got a whole entire book of him and then we had two subplots going on with Lucian and with Sloan that they were dealing with and then a whole entire other subplot of their history that there just wasn't enough room to focus on them and I'm pretty sure I got to like 80% through the book when it actually started focusing on them it didn't feel natural it didn't feel cohesive and I was extremely disappointed with how things like that came to be I'm saying all of this stuff to tell you guys why it was rated a three because I know that I've talked about how much I love the knock out series and I was so excited for this book for it to be rated at three stars is probably jarring to see and unexpected. And I am also sad because this was what I expected to be my favorite book out of the whole entire series. Very, very sad. But that this is not a bad book by any means. I would still recommend everybody to read it. But I still love these characters so deeply. I love the setting. I love the knock em out series. And I had a good time reading it. There were I every time I picked up the book, it wasn't like I was like, oh, I hate this book so much, I don't want to keep on reading it. It was more of a like, oh wow, I didn't know that this is where this book was going, but I enjoyed every second of reading it. There were just things that I was a little surprised weren't being discussed and talked about in the book, but overall this book was a three stars and I still enjoyed reading it. Okay, so we have the other two books for today's video, The Long Game and The Brothers Hawthorne. I think I'm going to take 
long game with me we're about to go obviously sit at the beach and i really am still in a romance mood like i'm not in the mood at this very moment to sit and read about like a mystery i feel like i want to try to get like a redeeming romance since that one didn't even really feel like a romance like it was a romance but it didn't really feel like it if that many sense. i literally felt like another thing is i felt like this book was like a mafia romance like i've read mafia romances and that's what this felt like it was weird anyway so I think I'm going to read The Long Game by Elena Armas. This is also a toss-up because I read The Spanish Love Deception and did not like that book at all. And so I haven't read another book. But this one, I think the storyline is interesting. And hopefully I like it. It's about a woman who goes on to coach these little girls and recruits the help of an ex, like pro soccer player. So let's hope this is good. I'm going to bring this with me. It's nice that this book is only like 300 something pages. So let's see what i think about the long game i am 73 pages in to the long game by lynn armas they don't have many comments other than they're supposed to be coaching a team of like nine eight seven year olds and they're talking like literal 16 year olds like they're talking about like astrology charts like what's your sign what time what day what time blah, 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 blah. like i'm sorry i guess it's been a while since i've been around like seven eight nine year olds but like i just don't feel that they talk like literal 16 year olds and also talking about tiktok and all of this stuff i don't it just we all know it's one of my biggest book pet peeves that's happening right now and i'm trying to ignore it because other than that the book's fine i mean we're only 70 pages in like what do i really have to complain about right now i guess something since i did just complain about something but you know you know how it be you know how I do. So I'm going to continue on. But that was the only thing that's sticking out to me right now. Also, I've gotten this book wet. I've gotten this book sneezed on. It's been through some stuff. My mom's going off about the dog beach. Just give me a sec. I, what page am I on? Oh, oh, I'm on page. I'm on page 143. I don't know how far that is into the book because I haven't opened up Goodreads to update that this is what I'm reading right now. But after my last update about the kids, I have decided to put that behind me because I think the kids are extremely cute even if they talk like 16 year olds. I think that they are a cute addition to the book. Usually I don't really enjoy kids but since it's not one of like their kids, it's very like I can do it. I'm having a really good time reading the book. It just feels like a good little rom-com, very easy to read. I'm really liking the banter between the two of them and their differences of personalities and how they push each other. And I think that the subplot of the girls little soccer team is super cute and adorable and all of the kids have their own little quirks to them so that's what's going on with the book um in other news if you will see the storm clouds i don't know if you can see it because i'm not looking at the camera um it looks like a storm's brewing and everybody at the beach is packing up to leave to leave is there still oh guys hold on i'll show you this pigeon it's not a pigeon i don't know what i'm saying Okay, and I just finished The Long Game by Elena Ramos. Okay, this is annoying me. Oh, this is upside down. So I've already settled on a rating, I think. Well, no, I haven't settled on a rating. I'm between a three and a half to a four. I'll update you guys when I settle on one since I did just finish it, but it is definitely either a three and a half or a four. It's a very cute, wholesome. I had a really good time reading it. It was just like a cute, fun read that i really liked the two characters in this book and i liked the way that the relationship progressed and everything in this book like everything about it i just really really enjoyed so three and a half to a four so now i'm about to pick up the brothers hawthorne and start that even though i don't really feel like reading like a mystery right now also my mom just saw a stingray in the water so i'm just scared always like so moody at night and I actually really love it 
I'm doing my first like official reading update for The Brothers Hawthorne. I'm 30% through this book right now. So it's been a while since I've opened the book and like actually sat down to read because when I'm reading it, I'm getting through it like so quick because her books are just such fast reads. The Inheritance Games, The Naturals, like all of that stuff. They're just so fast paced because I feel like she doesn't really draw out stuff. Like it doesn't feel like the thought is unfinished, but it feels like she knows just how to convey what she needs to convey in like a short amount of pages and i really enjoy that i didn't know what to go into this book thinking like i didn't really have any like thoughts going into it i just knew that it was going to follow the brother's point of view i just don't care about grayson's point of view in this book like and i love jameson's point of view i feel like in grayson's point of view we're just trying to learn like more about him i guess even though like i feel like i know about him enough from the three other books now we're trying to build up Grayson. I do need to look up though on TikTok like fan casts or like the aesthetic because I'm having a hard time like picturing them in my head like what they look like so I need to do that but I want to finish this book tonight. I actually plan on doing that because I really 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 want to finish it and with how fast paced this book is I definitely can. <sighs> Hello guys. Once and for all we're going to end this video. So no, once and for all, let me fix myself. Now that I look a tad bit less crazy, let's talk about the third and final book that we're reading in this reading vlog because I finished it. I finished The Brothers Hawthorne. I actually finished that today. I thought I was going to finish it last night, but I literally couldn't because I was severely, and when I say severely, I mean severely disappointed by this book. This and the things we left behind I was very much excited for. They were super anticipated releases for me and they both fell short. So with The Brothers Hawthorne, I was expecting it to have more of a storyline, like be progressing through some things and really nothing happened in this book. Like every time that I was reading it, I was like, okay, I don't understand like where this is going, but not in a good way. It was more of a like, okay, what's the point of this? Like, what is the point of all of this? Because I feel like it was stuff that we already knew. Like, we didn't need, like, a further glimpse into this. Like, we already knew all of this stuff going in. Literally, when I say nothing happened, I mean nothing happened. 500 pages. And this whole entire book just felt like a build-up to the next book. This book could have been 300 pages shorter. Go into the book and all of the big stuff, they already know and it's like you already know as a reader as well that like these things are a thing like you already know this stuff and so you think oh we're gonna further explore and dive into this and it's like no there's still nothing of essence that happens and i thought with this book being so long that a lot would happen no even in like jameson's point of view which i did enjoy far more than grayson's point of view the only thing that i really really liked about jameson's point of view though was that i feel like we got an insight of the aspect that i felt was missing in the inheritance games trilogy which is kind of a spoiler so i'm not going to say anything but i felt like that was a big thing missing with the inheritance games and we got that in his point of view but really anything else in his point of view i just wasn't really interested in that storyline i was at first but then that wasn't going anywhere either and it was super repetitive that being said i do love these characters and i love the riddles and the and how fast paced the book is so I landed on a three stars. At first I thought I was going to give it a two and a half, but I actually landed on a three. I definitely will read the next book because the way that this book ends out does make the next book a little bit more appealing, even though if there are some things that they're alluding to at the end of this book that become a thing in the next book, I will be so upset. I guess with this book, I was just expecting more and more to be going on, more to care about, and also it following Grayson and Jameson again, just like dealing with some of the things that I feel like we've already seen them deal with but maybe we wanted it in their perspective, but I feel like this could have been just one novella. Like this could have been 300 pages shorter. It could have been a novella and I feel like I would have liked it a lot more because it felt like a lot of things were really dragged out and like it was just like going nowhere. Like you would read and go to the next chapter and it was just the same thing over and over and over again. And I might sit with my thoughts on this one and have more of a better review at the end of the month with my wrap up, but for now, this is sitting out of three stars. So just as a little reminder, let's talk about the three books that we read in today's video. So first of all, we have Things We Left Behind, which was a three stars. Again, we've I feel like I spent a lot of this video talking about this book, so we're not gonna further dwell upon this. We have The Long Game by Elena Armas, which was surprisingly a four star read for me. It was such a cute book. I just really enjoyed every single moment of reading it. The reason that it's a four and not like a five is because I'm just not super attached to the characters like I haven't really thought much about the book 
after reading it other than just be like oh yeah that was a nice enjoyable book like when I was reading this I was like man I missed the feeling I had when I was reading this book but I, it was four stars I really enjoyed the small town aspect the relationship all of the other little storylines that were going on within this surprisingly this was really good and then we have the brothers hawthorne which we just talked about this this is a three stars so there are a lot of new releases coming out so if you guys want me to do another little new release reading vlog let me know down below but i hope you guys enjoyed today's video let me know if you guys have picked up any of these books and you guys have read them i am very interested to hear your guys thoughts and with that being said i will see you guys when i see you peace